<laughs> Bridges, love them. <laughs> Coconut water, love it. Not nad, just love it. <laughs> this is a piss take. This is a fucking piss take. No, this is a real woman. <laughs> this is just what women are like. All women are like this. Instead of getting Lyme disease. Welcome to Clown World, episode two. I'm here with Francis Foster from Trigonometry. Oh, right, Leo, how you doing? Oh, I meant to talk at that point. Thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have never done right a podcast where I'm literally looking at someone's pants in front of me. <laughs> Look, I've got I've got some washing hang up, but I just <laughs> I need to explain. It's not. Uh, it's not just that I'm dry and washing. It's I'm using it as uh, acoustic baffling. Yeah. Uh, Do you know Joe Rogan does the same thing, mate? Does he? Yeah, he does, mate. When you go into his uh, when you go into recording studio, he's got his fucking pants up. Really? Yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah. I think, I think you're mocking me. Anyway, <laughs> in this podcast, basically, uh, we just rattle through. Um, we rattle through some crazy videos yep. and things that uh, I've seen this week. Uh, there's also a Patreon-only version of this podcast, but we should probably crack on and give you some stuff to watch before you get yeah. bored. You saw that? You saw this video? Of I the, did see the video. It's uh, it pretty much hits every every point of um, yeah. of modern young people's life. It's yeah. a transgender barista yep. uh, who's upset about having to do a day's work. Let's okay, watch. let's see this. People wonder why we need a union at Starbucks, and I am literally about to quit. Like, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it, but, like, I really want to. I almost walked out today, and I'm crying in the back room right now, and I almost cut on the floor. It's just, I, like, I get, I'm, I'm like, a full-time student. I get scheduled for 25 hours a week, and on a weekend, they schedule me the entire day, open to close. I'm on the schedule for eight and a half hours, both Saturday and Sunday. I'm, like, oh three and a half hours into my shift. There's so many customers, and we have four people on the floor all day. <laughs> Only five people were put on the schedule and somebody had to call out. And there are four people running the whole store and there's so many customers and there's possibly scheduled five people. <laughs> we only have 13 people employed at this store and there's so many customers. I think I could... <laughs> we don't have fair scheduling. Managers don't care about us. Our manager was supposed to come in this weekend and he took himself off the schedule so he wouldn't be able to be held accountable for calling out. He just literally tore down the schedule that he was scheduled on and put up a new schedule where he wasn't on the schedule. Also, he couldn't have even seen that he was scheduled in the first place because he didn't want to be held accountable for not wanting to come in. <laughs> they don't want to help us. We need a union because this can't happen. This can't happen. We need fair scheduling. We need managers to hold themselves accountable for helping their workers they refuse to turn mobile orders off we need the liberty to be able to do that because there's so many mobile orders and i need to get through all of them and then people are yelling at me because they don't have their orders ready and they don't know what to do <laughs> and a customer was misgendering me today like really badly i didn't have their order ready and so they were just like talking talking to each other and they're like she's clearly incompetent i have a full mustache and beard <laughs> What the fuck? I don't get accommodations for being neurodivergent. I don't... Like, I can't use... Like, I, I keep looking at him using my sick time. I don't even know what to do anymore. I'm, like, at my wits end with this job. I really am. That was another... That was another young people's uh, point. Uh, neurodivergence. Yeah, which, exactly. What I call... <laughs> well, it's not even it's not even a neurodivergence is just like you're sort of normal yeah and that's it there's not even any sort of like you've got a bit of adhd you've got a bit of autism like every single other person in yeah. 2022 and it's it's a way of uh it's a way of like boring uh you know straight white people uh trying to get some victim points yeah noticed, exactly notice that a lot in the comedy circuit all, all the comedians are looking at uh they see all these comedians who are like uh, people of colour yeah. or uh, transgender or whatever and they see them and they're like man they're getting all these opportunities with the BBC that I'm mm -hmm. not getting so then yeah. they're like oh guys did I ever tell you about my struggles with ADHD <laughs> you know I've got you know mildly I sometimes you'll get mildly obsessed over things or I have trouble focusing like a normal person you know what I mean or autism I have trouble uh, in social situations everybody has trouble in social situations it's not a syndrome it's, it, not, a, it's not a disability it's called being a man mate it's called being a man like that 
person is. That yeah. person is a man. They were being misgendered at work. Yeah. I don't know why they were being misgendered because they were they were crying in a high pitched voice <laughs> like a man. Like, I mean, maybe maybe if you acted like you, it's not just about having a beard. You've got to act like a man as well. It's tough being a fucking man. Yeah, well, it's, it's, for, it's for him. Yeah, you know, welcome to being a man, mate. Where yeah. you go out, no one gives a shit. Yeah. People shout at you. Yeah. People wouldn't shout at you or shout at you as much if you're a woman. But if you're a bloke, it's just like, Oi, dickhead, get me my fucking coffee. <laughs> look, and look, everybody is a little bit neurodivergent, like you said. Like, you're autistic, aren't you, Liam? Yeah, probably, yeah. Well, I, I went my ex was, uh, she's some sort of, like, um, yeah, doctor for... Um, autistic kids and stuff yeah and she said that me and uh, Darius who do three speech podcasts yeah. with are definitely definitely without a doubt autistic yeah and I mean she had this checklist of all those like topic maintenance she's like you've got terrible topic maintenance which is probably going to be good for me organising this podcast <laughs> what's but, topic maintenance so it's if you're having a conversation you can sort of follow a thread and you don't whereas I just go and like just in the middle of a conversation I'll talk about something else yeah but it's because I get bored did you ever consider <laughs> that she's boring and I need to talk about something else I got diagnosed with ADHD, mate. Did you? Yeah. Are you on pills for it? No, I'm tempted to take them. They sound fucking brilliant. It's basically like NHS grade speed. Yeah. It's like really good quality speed. Really? Yeah, yeah. So like, I could take a couple, drop a couple, then go and have a bit of a rave. You, it's more like you could drop a couple and like totally do all your taxes. I took some, so uh, I got I got some of a friend who might be called Darius. Who just got <laughs> di- but everybody just gets diagnosed and then get this free speed. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it basically, it's just, it's really good. It's really good, um, uh, like no sort of side effects. Well, there probably are side effects, yeah. but not like you'd get with illegal speech. And do, speech. do you just get loads of shit done? Yeah, man, I did my, I did my tax return in a day. In really? A day. I'm not even an accountant. I've got no idea what I wrote down, but you know, <laughs> I just, you know, it just went by in a blur. So don't you, you could have ADHD, mate. I've, I've probably got ADHD. Everybody's got ADHD. That's the thing. That's the thing, but that um, yeah, this this whole thing of like you know I'm neurodivergent, I'm trans. Everybody yeah. just trying, everybody just a, a boring person trying to give themselves some kind of label so they sound a bit more interesting. Yeah, I mean that is true to one extent. To another extent, if you talk to people, right? To in another extent, if you talk to people, aka comedians, yeah. who have all got ADHD, they are not fucking normal. <laughs> yeah. And I only realised this when I was doing trigonometry where I inter- you interview a psychiatrist or a psychologist or an economist yeah. and they sit down, their thoughts are fully articulated, right. structured, they stay on one particular theme for a, a certain amount of time, they complete a thought. You talk to a comedian you're like, yeah, 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 and you're like, yeah, maybe ADHD is a thing. <laughs> so... Yeah. I don't know. I kind of think it is because every time I talk to a comedian, I look at them and halfway through with everything, I'm like, "Yeah, you're not normal, mate." Yeah, yeah. You know what, what about the what about the fact that they had to work? I mean, they had to work two days in a row or twenty twenty five yeah twenty five hours a week, which is a big which is a big ask. Yeah, they had to work two days in a row. Yeah, at the weekend, which is I mean I can't imagine such yeah. terrible working conditions, mm. and they had to do uh, shifts as long as eight and a half hours. I mean, this really puts the sort of the Wuhan, uh, not mm-hmm. the Wuhan, the Uyghur Muslim slave yeah. camps into perspective. You know, the the indentured servitude, the the people who died building the stadiums yeah. in uh, in Qatar. Yeah. I mean, their families must be looking at this, being like, well, at least they didn't have to make coffees for eight hours in a row. Exactly, and do you know what, right? As a former teacher, trust me, we had it harder because we had to work twelve hours in a day. And we also had to restrain ourselves from punching a kid. <laughs> and that's fucking harder. Which you're not allowed to do anymore. You're not allowed to. I don't know why. But some kids need it. Some kids do need it. There's nature's way. Yeah, it is. It's, there, are, there are just some kids you just need a fucking beating. Yeah. They were. We all knew that kid. Yeah. And they had school. Do you remember that one kid? There was more than one. Yeah, yeah. There's like two or three. And you were just like, if we could just execute them <laughs> then we'd what? actually have a good lesson in the playground like in front of the other kids yeah too. well it's funny because the older i get the more i used to think you know fundamentalist islam you know the taliban yeah, yeah, ISIS yeah. and stuff i was like man that insane. Yeah. Are you nuts? Like, this is just insane are you nuts like this is just who'd possibly want that now that i'm a father yeah and now that i'm a bit older and i see how the world works i'm like yeah no this is a this is a pretty pretty good system <laughs> this is you know 
what I mean? Like your ex, your execute because you know the the stadiums in Qatar they're going to be used for public executions once the World Cup's gone. Really? N- no, but <laughs> possibly, possibly yeah. at some yeah, point. Yeah, of course, of um, course, mainly gay people. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean after everybody's like finished wearing their uh, rainbow armbands yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff and their yeah. rainbow laces to celebrate uh, homosexuality in, in football, they're gonna. They're going to then use them for, for public executions. Because yeah, obviously, in Qatar, They're going to hang people by their rainbow laces. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gary Neville commentates. Yeah, exactly. So, funnily enough, I, saw, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, the this is the... I think he's the uh, ambassador. He's a Qatari oh, yeah. ambassador uh, for, for, the, for the World Cup. Um, so, and this is, this is what he had to say about... I think he thought he was off camera this is like a hot mic moment like when Gordon Brown called that woman a A a bigoted yeah Um, that bigoted woman yeah they have to accept our rules here but in the law aber im Gesetz ist Homosexualität verboten this haram Weißt du, was Haram ist? Haram, was ja, ist Haram. Ja, 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 ja. ja Haram. Ja. Gay ist Haram. Sie finden, Schwulsein ist Haram? Ja, es ist Haram. Ich bin kein strenger Muslim. Aber warum ist es Haram? Es ist ein geistiger Schaden. Actually, that wasn't a hot mic moment. That was no. just, it was an interview that he was doing. He was like, yeah, you know what? You know what? Like, they made me the ambassador for a reason. It's because I'm the most open and tolerant person. I'm going to put forward the best I, the best face of Qatar. And uh, this is the best thing I've got to say. Uh, <laughs> but listen, you look at the country he comes from. That may be the best dude. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. he is the best dude, the most moderate. He's just like, look, I don't want him to die. I just yeah. think they've got damage in the mind. Yeah, I got this job because I haven't stoned any women to death this week. Maybe that so. is the Qatari version of having pronouns in your bio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is the Qatari Owen Jones. Exactly. Right so, there. but his, this is the thing that pisses me off. They gave a World Cup to the Qataris. Yeah. You knew what you were doing when you gave a World Cup to them. You were getting money. Yeah, exactly. You were getting a shit ton of bloodstone, pe- bloodstained petro dollars, yeah. right? Why are you complaining when you suddenly find out they don't like gay people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're suddenly shocked? Yeah, well, I don't think they're the ones who are complaining. The ones that got all the money are pretty happy about it yeah like they're uh, and there's so much there's so much corruption in, in football and stuff I'm just disgusted to see the people that it bugs me about are people like uh, you know Gary Neville who you know on uh, on social media he's always calling out the government he's complaining yeah. about you know, whatever social ills food banks all that kind of stuff and I, I don't get the fuss around food banks like food banks are a sign of you know Success and they're a sign of excess because mm. we've got so much food we can afford to f- give it away, put it yeah. in these food banks. You mm. know what I mean? And man, you're not telling me that everybody and we're all right, some people are starving, they're going to food banks and stuff. Some people just want to, you know, spend the money on something else and they go to the food bank. So, uh, you know, it's not a, you know, obviously, <laughs> sorry if you've ever had to use a food <laughs> bank, blah blah blah. I've been dirt poor. I remember like having to scrabble around for change so I could go and get like a packet of spaghetti for 10p. When um, was this? When you were a comedian, mate? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, doing junglers when it wasn't paying anybody. Well, I used to, I used to work night shift at a petrol station for three pound fifty an hour, and I, you know I didn't get any uh, benefits. I, I had to pay all my housing and all that sort of yeah. stuff. So, um, so yeah, man, like. Once you're in the benefit system, you can sort of you can work it. I don't know, I don't know how we got into this after uh, talking about Qatar. Yeah. But um, but yeah, all these people like Gary Neville who um, who like you know bang on about all these social ills, blah blah blah. The government needs to do better, and then he's happy to take all this money from the from Qatar. He's not it's not just money from ITV. He's working for uh, the Qatari broadcaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Qatari broadcaster. So he's getting loads of money from them. I think. Um, uh, what's his name? David Beckham is yeah. getting like an insane amount of money. It's like 140 million or something. Yeah. And um, and yeah, then to it's just such a it shows us sort of the hypocrisy. You won't believe this, but some woke people are hypocritical. Look, this is the point. You know, when people like I don't like the hypo- hypocritical element of it. I really don't. If you were going to basically say how and proclaim how virtuous you are 24 seven on social media. And you do something like this, you deserve pushback. Yeah. If I was offered 140 million to promote the Qatari government, 
I would come out and be like, yes, it's a disease of the mind, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. I would for 140 mil. Yeah, of you, course. A gay bloke would do it. Yeah. yeah Owen yeah. Jones would fucking do it for 140 <laughs> mil. Peter Tatchell. They should yeah. have done that with Peter Tatchell because yeah. then he wouldn't have gone there demonstrating. You yeah. Know what I mean, I mean to be fair to Peter, and we like we had him on trigonometry. Like he's a genuinely principled guy. Yeah. Do you know he went up to Mike Tyson? Have yeah. you heard this story? What did he do? He So Mike Tyson was walking down the road. And bear in mind, this was when Mike Tyson was just starting to go full-blown insane. Right. And he confronted him and he said, I don't agree with you using the F word. Right. Like, like the, the, that word. Yeah. And Mike Tyson apparently squared up to him and was just <laughs> like, why not? And he went, well, would you like it if I called you the N word? And right. he went, no. He went, so why is it acceptable to, yeah. to call me that? And Tyson actually apologised. Oh, right. Nice. But, like, Peter Tatchell genuinely has principles. And he, and he puts he puts himself on the line, like when he went to Moscow and, yeah. and protested there, which I think is more dangerous than protesting in Qatar. Yeah. It's like, cause in Moscow, you know, people disappear to, to jails. I mean, Brittany Griner is still in a... In fact, she's been sent to some sort of penal col- colony now. Yeah. Um, so she's a... Brittany Griner's this, like, uh, NBA, women's NBA she's star. A, she's a, I think she was known as the basically the best women's basketball player in the world. She's the best women's basketball player in the world, so still not that good. <laughs> but she, she's massive, mate. She is, she is huge. She's, like, six foot... Eight? So yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's huge. Uh, but she went to uh, do, a, do a game in Russia... And uh, she had some sort of cannabis vape, which mm. there's got to be a problem these days because, you know, in some parts of the world, cannabis is totally, you know, oh, decriminalized cool. and yeah. legal and stuff and regulated. So then you can have your, you know, vape that you bought in a shop and you wouldn't even be, fi- be thinking, oh, this is a, you know, this is something that's possibly mm. illegal. And then she takes it uh, to Russia and gets like banged up. And obviously Russia was looking for, uh, Russia's always looking for an excuse to punish yeah, the West. What they don't realise is we all hate Brittany Griner because <laughs> she hates America, she hates freedom and democracy. Uh, and so, yeah, man, I'm, I'm like, yeah, uh, do you still hate America? <laughs> do you still hate Western liberal democracy now that you're in a Russian penal colony? Do you reckon when she comes back she's going to run for the Republicans? <laughs> <laughs> she's just going to be like fully right wing and based <laughs> and just be like... <laughs> you know, that'd be interesting if she yeah. does, but... With, with people like Beckham, I've got more respect for Beckham because he doesn't pretend. Do, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He doesn't pretend to be woke. Yeah. He doesn't pretend to be, you know, all of these things. He yeah. just goes, you know what? I'm just going to go and I'm going to take the money and 140 mil. Yeah. And every single person, including you, including me, would do that for 140 yeah, mil. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. But it wouldn't, be a, it wouldn't be a hypocrisy for us because we're openly... Uh, I hate guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, the hypocritical part for us would be pretending we like football. Yeah, actually, you like football. I quite like football. You like football. I yeah. don't. I think it's boring. And I think the only the only times uh, it gets interesting is when there's a fight in the stadium. Yeah, hold the arms in Qatar. So yeah, that'll be fun because then, like, instead of them just getting the you know the stewards coming across yeah. to bundle them away, yeah, they'll have some guy with a big scimitar, <laughs> like in like in Indiana Jones. Mate, you should go if you don't have fights in the stadium. You yeah. should actually go and watch West Ham. Right, really. Because every time we start losing, we just start beating each other up. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally you, what happens. Do you ever get involved? Get a bit tasty? No, mate. Can you see this? <laughs> I am not gonna get a, come across some like skinhead psychopath <laughs> as he fucking pounds my face into the ground because he's got unprocessed rage from a horrible childhood and the only way he can express it is by going and watching a football team and if they don't do exactly what he wants he just descends into uncontrolled violence no mate right, the next uh, thing I saw was this this person uh, identifies as uh, trans disabled yeah um, so they were they were, um, it was an able-bodied man who identifies as a disabled woman who mm-hmm. was interviewed sympathetically on Nor- Norwegian TV. I don't have a clip of, clip of that, but I've got a clip of the sort yeah. of, uh, the newspaper article. So a Norwegian man, uh, and he uses a wheelchair, or she, a she, yeah. misgender. Get it right. Yeah, I've got to not misgender this uh, yeah. this person. It's very, yeah. very important. Man, I, I think all this, like, because that, that's obviously, like, a, a dude is damaging to, to genuine trans people who actually, you know, put the effort in and look like the person. He does, to be, to be fair, he looks more like a disabled person than he does yeah. a transgender, like, mm. than he does a woman. The, uh, she looks more like a... You know, like, in all of this stuff, I just feel so sorry for, like, for trans people. 
But genuine trans people. I'll, I'll give you an example. So in 2016, I was at the Edinburgh Festival. I did a run at the Pleasance, right? Yeah. It, which is like a venue in, in Edinburgh. And the person who was our tech was a trans woman. Yeah. And I remember she came up to me and went, I'm going through a transition. I want to be known as Lisa. Could you just refer to me, please, as Lisa? Yeah. And that was it. No yeah. one gave a shit for the entire run. Afterwards, she was a fucking great tech person. We gave her some flowers, some chocolates. We're like, brilliant, great stuff. Bye. Yeah. No, no one gave a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this entire thing has been politicised. Yeah. And, like, people end up fucking hating each other. And, like, like for someone like her, she was just like, oh, I, I just really want to live and identify as a woman. Yeah. But now it's like these fucking psychos come out. And just like, yeah, I've got, I want you to wax my balls and call me madam. And you're yeah. like, the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, trend like like Lisa probably put the effort in yeah. and looked like a woman. Yeah. And even, you know, uh, even in the old days, like, you get trans people who, even if they didn't, you know, quite look like a woman, yeah. you could see that's what they wanted to look yeah. like. So you'd be, you'd obviously respect them and yeah. refer to them as a woman and stuff. But now you just get like big lumpy blokes yeah. being like, "I'm a woman," because under you know self ID rules, like the, the they're trying to like cast into stone in law in yeah. Scotland, you, anybody can just say, "I'm a woman," and then you're a woman, and that's obviously like you've got to at least meet me halfway with the transition. I'm willing to put the effort in yeah. in my head if you put some effort in in real life. You know what I mean? But you've got to at least meet me halfway. Some of these people. It's like my brain is something to do 90% of your transition. It's not my transition. <laughs> why, why am I doing the work? You know do, what I mean? Yeah, I remember when I was working for a housing association, this per, this person came in who was transgender. And this was in 2004. Yeah. And this it was basically a bloke with a badly fitting wig, right? <laughs> and we did the interview for him because I was working for the housing association at the time. And it didn't help that his surname was man. <laughs> so we had to call her Miss Man. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, oh, my. Oh, just like, Miss Man. <laughs> you just have to keep an absolute fucking straight face. Jesus Christ. And trans disabled, I mean, that seems, you know, slightly... Slightly offensive to genuine disabled people because it's not like they can transition back. Yeah. I mean, unless it's you know some is caused by by their own lifestyle. But you know, most <laughs> most of it, if you got like you know some sort of you know if you've broken your spine or whatever, that's not that's not coming back. Yeah. And also, you probably wanted to come back. So then, when somebody comes along and says like this this uh, this person said um, so it's uh, Jorand Victoria Alme, fifty three. An able-bodied male who now identifies as a disabled woman. In the interview, Almy said that he had always wished that he had born a, been born a woman who was paralysed from the waist down. I mean, that's that's just some sort of fetish. Yeah. That's not a. Uh, I don't know. I think that's. I think that's slightly distasteful. You know, my mum. So there's a transgender person working at my mum's gym, and by the way, my mum is actually disabled, right? Yeah. And. <laughs> She just went, Francie, I, I, do, I do not know what they are, so I just call them he and she. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Mum, that's not the way you fucking do it. But th this is the problem, is that the idea that you can identify as everything. Actually, yeah. I think the most offensive thing is when people go, yeah, but I'm straight, but I identify as queer. Man, you know what? I totally agree with you, because also there's... there's gay people like, you know, Peter Tatchell, yeah. who've, you know, who've lived through decades of persecution, genuine persecution, hate and intolerance, you know. The, the AIDS like, crisis, like, when people were dying and no one yeah. gave a fuck. Like, ah, it's just gay, man, who gives a fuck? Yeah, like, when it's... die. And, and, like, before that, when it was genuinely, like, illegal. It yeah. was illegal. Under yeah. the cover, there was no, like, you know, equal rights or anything. Like, now yeah. we've, you know, everybody's equal under, under the law. And, um, you know, for somebody to then come in and try and steal some of the... Uh, Victim points, the yeah. privilege points, get you know, and get some sort of position on the on the intersectionality privilege yeah. matrix, yeah. like by saying I'm queer. It's like it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It no. doesn't mean anything. And also, man, I, I'll respect you if you at least suck a dick. Yeah, at least suck a dick. They don't they don't like you know. I'll I'll totally respect you as queer. It doesn't mean anything. But if the next video is around um is around uh, that kind of thing. So this yeah. is uh. 
some person explaining why they can use uh, why they're gay uh, even though they are a male and their girlfriend is a woman. Okay. I think that's the gist of it. It's very yeah. complicated these days, but I think yeah. that's it. Let's check it out. Why do I call myself gay if my pronouns are he, they, and I'm dating a girl? Well, um, oh, What? Your pronouns don't equal your gender! I can say that louder for y'all in the back if you want me to, too. <laughs> You can identify as any gender you want and use whatever pronouns make you feel most comfortable. <laughs> Meaning you can identify as a male, but use she, her pronouns if that's what you like. <laughs> I identify as just me. <laughs> whatever that is. I'm just me, baby. And I like to use gay as an umbrella term, like how queer people use queer for themselves. Because that's what feels right to me. Duh. <laughs> so, I mean... Using gay as an umbrella term, that's sort of like what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Because um, gay isn't this umbrella term that you can just, you know, apply to yourself. It's a sort of quite specific, measurable thing. Mm -hmm. It means if you're a person of this sex and you have sex with people of the same sex. And it's you a, like musical theatre. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and rollerblading. Yeah. It's not, uh, you know, there's, <laughs> there's, it's not just like a badge you can sort yeah. of assign to yourself. And that's, that's kind of, I don't know, that's kind of offensive. I'd have thought. What? How come I'm now the person getting triggered by this stuff? <laughs> I j to me, it's really narcissistic because what it says is, oh, what? That shit that you've been through. Yeah. That crap that you had to deal with, like when you were a kid growing up. Like, I, was, I grew up in South London in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. If you were gay, it wasn't a good time. Yeah, yeah. It genuinely wasn't a good time, right? And for someone then to come along. When everything's now kind of open and everything's better and go, yeah. you know what, I identify as gay. I bet you you wouldn't identify as gay in Qatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet your sexuality is pretty fucking fluid then. Well, it's like all these companies that have their, you know, when they celebrate Pride Month. Yeah. Uh, they have, you know, all their stuff, you know, across like America, across the UK, across Europe. It's all like, you know, rainbow flags and stuff. But then you see their Saudi Arabian offices, and they're not as yeah. uh, you know the Ugandan offices. Yeah. They're not doing all this uh, rainbow stuff, and that's the places that they need to make the change. Like yeah. we've already won the war in, yeah. in in the West. You know, gay people get equal rights. They're they're pretty much uh, you know it's, nobody. There's very few people who are sort of judgmental about it. Whereas in Uganda. In Saudi Arabia, oh yeah. my God, you still got the open homophobia, the, the you know, they don't have equal rights, you got the killings and stuff, so yeah, man, people are always wanting to kick down a door that's already open. Absolutely, and it's because it's just easy, it's yeah. just really, really easy, but going like Peter Tatchell does and going to Russia and then going into the heart of a dictatorial homophobic regime and going, yeah, maybe I don't agree with this, that yeah. takes guts. Yeah. That takes all oh, just being insane, right? Yeah. <laughs> but 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 that it's just easy, man. It's yeah, just yeah. an easy way to say like I'm a good person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, waving a flag, literally waving a flag, literally saying that you're a good person. Do you know what the straight flag is? What is it? It's beige. Really? <laughs> yeah. To me, I've got more sympathy now because I'm like, that's a beautiful act as trolling. Yeah. I've given you a beige flag because you're fucking boring. Yeah. Wave your beige flag. What's interesting is there's uh, there's no kids getting bullied at school because they're not like queer or yeah. gay or anything like that. Yeah. So um, there like, there've been various reports. I don't know how many of them are, are true and how many are just you know trolls and whatever. But uh, but yeah, I, I believe it. What well, happened to it happened to a niece yeah. of a friend of mine uh, got bullied at school. Uh, now now the sort of um, uh, the insult is that you're straight instead yeah. of you know twenty years ago the insult was was you're gay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it shows how, you know, kids just want to bully someone. Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> whatever, whatever matrix you construct of whatever identity is good or whatever, they're yeah. always going to, there's going to be, they always seem to find somebody to, to put on the bottom and, uh, and make fun of. But also as well, and, and there's a serious point to all this, which is there's going to be a backlash. Yeah. If you're doing all this stuff, if you're starting to Literally, do... in the Middle East, there will be a backlash. <laughs> yeah. Whip people on the back. 
But there's also a backlash happening now. Like, everyone's going, oh, why is Andrew Tate so popular? Blah, 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 amongst yeah. young men. It's like, well, you've told young men that they're toxic, that they're pieces of shit, yeah. or hashtag all men are trash, you know, uh, mediocre white male. All of these things, again and again and again, and you suddenly wonder why they're not going to listen to you. You're suddenly yeah. wondering why they're pissed off. You're suddenly wondering why they're angry and resentful, yeah. and they're, you're, they're consuming content that you don't like. Yeah. Guess what? If you tell someone there's a piece of shit day in, day out, pretty soon they're going to tell you to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. And also, people are missing out on the sort of valuable information that Andrew Tate and people like Jordan Peterson yeah. give to, to young men. Because young men, we don't... We don't well, I say we, I'm, yeah. we're not young men, but <laughs> but when we worry young, like men, we don't do what girls do, which is like sort of discuss uh, relationships and how to uh, you know how to get the. We'd never like help each other get a, yeah. get a girl. We try and sabotage each other. Yeah, of course. Because it would be funny. Yeah. But we'd never like actually help each other. No. Know, chat up a woman. So then I found like the pickup artist. Yeah. Movement. You know the the book. I read some of the books. I went and. Uh, yeah, and I read some, some of those them. books as well, man. And it totally works and it totally helps and it's not about. It was like, the, the mainstream media came in and they're like, oh my god, this is disgusting. Oh, this is about you know manipulating women into bed and it's like yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good thing. Everybody, you know, it's not. Like you're, you're not like hypnotizing. You're not Jeffrey Dammering them in the yeah. head. It's like you know, you're literally just uh, growing as a person and yeah. working out how to interact with people so you can. And it helped with every avenue of life. You know, with the uh, with work and everything. You learn the skills. You learn self confidence. And I think Andrew Tate is giving young men some self confidence and self belief. And even though like a lot of the stuff he says, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with. Man, it's way better than just the constant barrage of like, yeah, you're shit, you're worthless, you know, you're yeah. you're scum. Well, the thing is with Andrew Tate is that that there's some of the there's a lot of the stuff I'm like I really don't like this and I don't agree with this. And but the problem is is that people lumping Jordan Peterson, so Jordan and Joe Rogan, so these two into with Andrew Tate. Yeah. And they saying things like, oh, you know. Like Jordan Peterson is for incels, and it's. And do you know what? Maybe if more incels listened to Jordan and actually had learned some self reliance and actually found ways to improve their life and yeah. be more masculine and be more of a man and want to improve, yeah. they wouldn't be incels any longer. And take responsibility so, for yeah. their life. That's the big message he gives is like take responsibility for your feelings and take responsibility for your own sort of development. Yeah. And he even said yeah, at, his, at his speeches or at his you know, talks that he, or he does in the touring circuit, uh, you know, over the years he's seen uh, the people that come, you know, they, they start off, they're all like badly dressed and yeah. look like shit. And uh, he didn't say that. But, yeah. you know, uh, they, you can see they're not doing so well and now they're coming in suits and stuff because they've, they've followed his, uh, his learnings or teachings or whatever. Yeah. And they're so they're succeeding. They're taking responsibility for their for their lives, and they're they're becoming they're becoming happier, more stable, succeeding at work, succeeding in relationships. So that shows that it you know but, it, it's a good thing for incels. Maybe Andrew Tate isn't so good for incels. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think Andrew Tate is the, is the right way to go. But but I think pick the pickup art stuff is like a lot of that is just per at the very least it gets you out there and talking yeah. to people in the real world. Yeah, and it you know it was saying things you know like work out, go to the gym. Like, yeah. You know we were, we worked in an industry which almost celebrated bad mental health. Yeah, and it, bad it's, physical health and as well. bad physical health. And look, there's a very long and you know not honourable, but you know there's a very long comedic tradition of the of the fat guy making fat jokes. You know, yeah. people like Ralphie May and all of these people who are great stand-ups. I mean, unfortunately, most of them are now dead because of their of their weight issues. But <laughs> <laughs> but they, they would always, you know... I guess the point I'm trying to make is it's that you need people like this. You really need people yeah. to come out, especially for men, especially when so many men don't have dads now. Yeah. Especially when we don't have positive male role, male roles to go, take responsibility, work hard, stand up straight. You know the basics, and people will say, "Oh, but why doesn't your dad teach you that?" Because unfortunately, we've got a fatherlessness problem yeah. in our society, and most a lot of boys don't have a positive male role model. Yeah. So what are you going to do? You need people like Peterson or Rogan or all these people to show people that there is another way of being. Yeah. 
and by demonising men and saying that they're trash and all the rest of it, you're not fucking helping. Yeah, yeah. And if people spoke about women the way people speak about young men, yeah. Oh my god, they'd be like thrown in jail. But yeah. we are going to talk about women. Okay, like good. That on, on this. Yeah. Uh, so in fact, this this woman here, uh, so she's got a, a GoFundMe. This just like I just thought this was this was. <laughs> <laughs> Like the entitlement of uh, of young people these days. Yeah. So this is uh, a woman called Doa. I bet, actually, I better check her pronouns before I assume yeah. she's she's a woman. But she looks like I mean she's obviously uh, female. Mm. So it says help Doa heal from racial trauma. Uh, so it says hello, my name is Doa. I am a Nubian Afro Indigenous interdisciplinary artist. Oh fuck me, you're definitely getting that yeah. Arts Council grant. Yeah, and the a decolonial practice-based researcher currently residing on the stolen lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsilwatu, uh, which she lives in Vancouver is what she's trying to say. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, she's obviously paid by the, paid by the fucking word. Yeah. Uh, she says, it's really <laughs> difficult for me to ask for financial support. However, I'm I've asking this for... <laughs> yeah, I've set up this GoFundMe. Yeah. I've exhausted all of my options. What, have you tried sucking dick? <laughs> uh, I've exhausted all of my options and need my community's help through this healing journey. I work for a charitable arts organization and I am initiating this GoFundMe because I'm currently dealing with the impacts of racial trauma I experienced at a work event which took place on April 7th and 8th, 2022. So she works for a charitable arts organization. So I should imagine it already screams racism. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So on the 7th, I faced racist and transphobic remarks from an artistic director working in one of BC's school districts. That's British Columbia. Yeah. Uh, on the 8th, I witnessed a culturally appropriated performance by a local non-black hip-hop instructor who publicly humiliated me and the black community after I highlighted her lack of cultural and historical context about hip-hop. This had to be addressed, as it could be harmful for the children she educates in schools. I mean, when we're talking about harm, yeah, it's not gonna. none of them are going to lose a fucking hand. But anyway... Do you think generations of black people have been traumatised by Eminem? <laughs> I think Vanilla Ice probably yeah. did more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ice Ice Baby. Yeah. That's more... That, that is genuinely traumatising. <laughs> so uh, the hip-hop instructor admitted that her dance school does not have a single black instructor because they lack the 10 years of experience she's looking for. My employer took no action with either the transphobic educator. Where transphobic come from? <laughs> We're trans- what's transphobic about it? Everything's transphobic, mate. Transphobic educator or the dance instructor. Not even an email of acknowledgement was sent to the colleagues in support of the only black employee. I mean, bear in mind this is in Canada, which is I lived in Vancouver for a while, and like there there is uh, ethnic diversity, but it tends to be uh, Asian rather mm. than um, rather than African, mm-hmm. black or whatever you're supposed to say. Uh, so she goes on. I had a mental breakdown and left the event early with permission from my employer. Oh, I wish we had footage of the mental breakdown. Can you imagine? Do you, do you know what? There have been times where I have seen, like, mainly, like, open mic performances yeah. where I did have a mental breakdown watching them. Do you know what I mean? So if it was spectacularly shit, then maybe I've got some sympathy. <laughs> so after leaving the event early, uh, she later received a text that the staff photo was overlooked and was taken without me. Yeah, because you fucking left. <laughs> you left. How do you have a photo taken if you're not there? Yeah. I was excluded, which further alienated me. Additionally, after this traumatic event, celebratory messages were shared internally about how successful the event was, completely dismissing my trauma until I brought these insensitive and hurtful messages to their attention. Oh my, how did she ever get a job? Who on earth is going to hire this? It's like... Uh, she just tries to make it all about her yeah. and she creates a big fuss. It's like, you know, fucking hell. Yeah, it's man. just a picnic. You don't need to stick your dick in the mashed potato. <laughs> but she continues, racial trauma has tremendously impacted my mental and physical health in ways I never experienced before. I haven't been eating, drinking or sleeping well. My sense of taste and smell changed. Even food I used to enjoy smells repulsive. I have severe neck... Maybe she's got COVID. Yeah, yeah it does sound like se- Severe it, neck and shoulder pain that I'm cu- currently treating out of pocket since my extended health coverage through work has been exceeded. Oh my God, she's just rinsing this company. Yeah. She's like, when you have a, a work event like that, it's an excuse to just, you got a jolly, you don't need to do any work. Yeah. You go along, there's like free tea and coffee and sandwiches and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And maybe a piss up in the evening. It's great, you just get to chat to people instead of working. She fucking ruined it. They're probably not, not even going to have it next year because she like had a big strop and started crying and stuff. And now she's like, uh, now she's rinsing their health benefits as well. She's just, she's ruining everything for everyone. 
Uh, I've suffered multiple anxiety attacks in public, which is why I limited commuting on public transport and I'm using Lyft Uber instead. <laughs> that is fucking brilliant. <laughs> my ADHD symptoms worsened as my brain feels extremely overwhelmed trying to navigate ways to cope with the trauma, financial burden and stress. Most of the time I have extreme fear of leaving my apartment unless I am with my friends. It takes me hours to plan leaving and a lot of times I get so physically exhausted from thinking and planning I just give up and don't leave. I recently completed my second MA degree. Oh my god, that's a master's. This just showed the worthlessness of university. They haven't yeah. prepared, or she's done a degree, she hasn't learned how to get through a fucking work event. Like yeah. a nice fucking, a nice work lunch. Yeah. Like, oh. She, you know what? She needs to go work at Starbucks. Yes, yeah, she does. Do do an eight hour shift, an eight and a half hour shift yeah. at Starbucks, making mobile orders. And Whilst people are shouting at her. People are shouting, possibly misgendering. Yeah, I uh, think I think that is, I think that's the best thing for her to do, man. Yeah. I, do you know what it is? So it's just there's just a lot of people who are just exceptionally entitled. Yeah, yeah, like her. She's missed her deadline for her ME. Yeah. Uh, I mean, f- there's still fucking. I thought we'd be through this, but it goes on for fucking <laughs> pages. But anyway, she's uh, she's. T- oh my god! So she's um, she's fighting to normalise holding workplaces accountable and to taking immediate action whenever we share instances of microaggressions, precisely because they cannot be proven according to the colonial system. <laughs> this is the system we're trying to dismantle. Do you see how hard it is? Isn't this just an example that maybe we should keep that colonial system? Yeah. And, like, not have all this, like, if you give people, like, a little bit of, you know, a little, an inch, they take a mile. So now, you know, she's wanting to, like, shut down entire workplaces mm. because of some perceived microaggression. Yeah. I mean, I get that, you know, microaggressions can exist, but also, you're a big boy now, so get the fuck on with it. You know what I mean? It's not yeah, I mean, you bad. did just misgender her. Yeah, like. But, but that, I, that the, the whole point of a microaggression, like, what? It wouldn't work in this country. It's little. It, a, it's little, and B, we are the most. Pa- England is the most passive-aggressive nation on earth. We've built a culture of microaggression. Yeah, because we can't be aggressive. <laughs> We're too repressed. We're in Scotland, we've got macro aggressions. Yeah, exactly. which are Large aggressions. Yeah, but in England, we're like, could, could is it okay if, if if you please wouldn't do that? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I can't, it's a micro, you won't yeah. believe what Francis said to me. Yeah, and that's it. The, all our culture is based on microaggressions. <laughs> Can you just imagine if we took microaggressions out of English conversation? Yeah. We'd all have breakdowns. Yeah. There's no way we'd be able to communicate. <laughs> well, this this is the future that this woman uh, envisions. I envision a future where we don't have to fight for our basic human rights. I don't think this is about basic human rights. No. This is about... This is about, uh, like, basically... Uh, Destroying any workplace efficiency uh, for your own little tantrums. Yeah. Uh, fight for our basic human rights to be represented, treated equally, and receive all the support we need as beings who already deal with unhealed intergenerational trauma. My ancestors used dreaming as a tool of survival. Did they? I think they used bison, hunting bison mm. or something as a tool of survival. It's 2022, and I will not dream of change. I will make it happen. I'm here to break the colonial oppressive cycles that force us to leave those toxic work environments instead of fighting for our rights. My ancestors did not have the privilege to heal and part of decolonizing oppressive systems is being offered the opportunity to do so. This is why I need your help to allow me to ask. Basically, give me money. Give yeah. me money as give I fight me. for justice and financial reparations. The funds will cover the following. 18 therapy sessions. One month's rent, as I was abruptly informed, my paid leave ends early August and I'm currently navigating disability application timelines along. Ah, oh, God, can you, can you not just work? <laughs> can you not just do some work for some money? No. Uh, and some credit debt to pay back the lift expenses incurred since the incident as I reintegrate socially. Absolutely mad. I mean, like, the thing is, she's got three and a half thousand Canadian dollars. How much is that? It's... I think it's about two thousand pounds, maybe two and a half thousand pounds. That's all right. That's pretty good for for basically a shit blog post. A shit blog post because you went to you went to watch some. I mean, it was probably shit. Yeah. The to the hip hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was a workplace event, so obviously yeah. they got some sort of government grant to yeah. have you know this uh, this hip hop artist at their event. A Canadian white hip hop artist. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm starting to feel a bit traumatized. <laughs> so they're probably shit, right? Yeah. But we're starting to see your point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe you do deserve two grand love in your bank account. <laughs> maybe you do. And maybe I'm wrong. But do you think, you know how she's saying, you know, we need to decolonize, we need to, you know, deconstruct these, these systems and stuff. Do you think the thing that's going to bring down all this, this nonsense is the fact that, like, she's making it, um, she's, she's making, people like her are making it, making workplaces inefficient. You know, yeah. and we're seeing this with equality, diversity and inclusion yeah. through every HR department. It actually gums up the, it prevents the sort of fluid, the efficient working of, of organisations. Because instead of just hiring whoever's going to be best and who they like the best, they've got to hire, they've got to tickle these boxes and, you know, make sure they're hiring, you know, appropriately and according to all these, Look, all these this things. Is, this is what's going to happen. This is what happens with every workplace. Most people are shit. There's about two people who are competent who do all the work. Do all the work, yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, I've I've always been proud to be in the ninety eight percent. All through, like I've worked in local government, and yeah. I mean it's probably a bit higher than ninety eight percent. Yeah, sitting about doing nothing in local yeah. government, but it is incredibly easy just to just to turn up. Yeah, turn up, sit at a computer, and do fuck all all day. Like, yeah, absolutely nothing. So yeah, man, she needs to she needs to get a job at Haringey Council. She does. Yeah, that is what she needs to do. Come to Croydon Council, love. <laughs> You'll be fine. Come and work in some kind of like waste processing. <laughs> you won't have to do any work. You'll just be able to sit there, fire off a few emails. <laughs> Bosh. Uh, now we've got a man who identifies as a dog. Um, I assume he ident identifies as a dog. He's sort of dressed as a dog. The thing is, he's eating... Is that French toast? If he identifies a dog, why has he got a fucking fork? Yeah, why has he got a fork? Why is he eating French toast and he's not eating out of a dog bowl? Why is he wearing a ring? Yeah. None of it. She... Does this make you think... Because you know Putin you know, uses this as sort of propaganda, pro-Russian yeah. propaganda. He says, like, you know... Well, look what they're doing in the West. Like, all the women are men and the men are women. Yeah. And the ones that aren't are dogs. Like, do you think... Do you, is this just playing into Putin's hands? No, I, I, you know what I think? I just think we need to stop giving mental people, like, exposure. Yeah. If you, like... Like I just did. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> do you remember Ollie London? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's still, still in the go. Right, yeah. I mean, he's now... He's detransitioned. He's doing all this stuff. Like, so he... he, he he, At one he, point he transitioned. At another point he transitioned to Korean. Yeah, he identified as Korean, right? Yeah. And they said, "How? What? How? What? How can you possibly identify as Korean when you're a white guy? I think he was brought up in the UK." Yeah. And he went, "Well, I really like K-pop, and I've had plastic surgery to make my eyes squinty." <laughs> Which is the same. Uh, I remember when James Bond yeah. transitioned to Japanese. Yeah. And uh, you only live twice. Uh, he went through the same process. Yeah, and you would just go, so if you make your eyes squinty and you identify as Korean, how is that not racist? <laughs> how is that not racist? Yeah. Like, what, you just suddenly think that you can... <laughs> I guess his his defence, or a defence of him, is he's um, celebrating it. He's being... He loves Korean Well, that's all culture. right. Which yeah, is, is it's fine. I'd have thought. I'd have thought that. So I mean, the, the squinty, getting plastic surgery to make your eyes squinty. That's a little bit. You know, that's what that's like Justin Trudeau if he overcommitted to the part. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? That if stuff he... doesn't wash off. No, and it's just like you can't make your eyes squinty and then go. Yeah, I'm now Ki Jun and I was born in Seoul or whatever. <laughs> you just like we need to stop giving mental people. <laughs> The problem is it's social media. Like yeah. everybody literally has a channel where they can start banging on about their own mental illness. And the freakier it is, the more sort of exposure it seems oh. it seems to get. This is why us uh, us is the sort of reasonable voice, the middle ground. I mean that is fucked <laughs> if we are the middle ground, mate. <laughs> but you see people like there's that guy Nico Nico Avocado, Nico Avocado or something. Yeah. He's a they call it muck banging, which again has been has been he's been accused of cultural appropriation because he's like a white guy. I assume he's white, 
Uh, but he's doing this thing that's like a, it's an Indonesian thing apparently mm. mukbang it's when you eat tons and tons of food like massive plates mm. of noodles and stuff so he does this mukbang but he's done it to the point he started off he was like a regular healthy looking mm. guy yeah. now he's like man he's so obese yeah. and he does these mukbang things he's got one of those uh, you know the oxygen things that go in your nose for really fat people because yeah. they're you know they can't breathe properly yeah. And because uh, the folds of fat, you know, close over, and yeah. you know his, his own body fat is trying to choke him to death, trying to choke him out like an MMA fighter, yeah. looking for that tap out just to stop him eating more fucking noodles. And uh, yeah, it's disgusting to see somebody sort of self harming, but it, it does is really popular on the internet. Even though you're basically watching like a mentally ill person self harm. Yeah, um, and does he make a lot of money? I assume he makes a lot. He makes enough to buy about you know ten wagamamas a day. <laughs> man like and and this is the thing when we talk about trans people and you know and of course they should be respecting whatever else yeah but they're mentally ill yeah 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 they well, have gender dysphoria that's yeah. a mental illness yeah and the way uh like a good outcome a good solution a good treatment for some of them is to sort of um is to transition physically transition yeah, yeah, yeah. and that totally works for other people especially kids it tends to resolve itself. Over 90% yeah. is, to, is resolved through puberty. Yeah. Feelings. Because everybody, man, when you're, you're growing up when you're a kid, like even when you're a teenager, even when you're an adult, you know, you feel, you know, confused, yeah. mixed up. Yeah. Nobody's sure of their... It's not like anybody's, you know, born just knowing exactly, you know, who they are and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you're going through all these hormonal changes, but going through puberty usually resolves it for kids. But in Scotland... Man, and it, like at the Tavistock Centre as well, and in America, man, there's this sort of gender ideology that's, that's just it's purely based around affirming. If anybody yeah. says that they're trans, it's like, wow, you're definitely trans. And even exploring any other options uh, other than affirming them and putting them on a pathway to, to transitioning is seen as transphobic. Mm. So in Scotland, man, they've been prescribing puberty blockers to children as young as nine which is, man, a nine-year-old can't consent to something like that. That's just, like, it's it's sick. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Look, it, let's just call it what it is, which is, it's child abuse. Yeah. That's what it is. It is child abuse. A nine-year-old cannot consent. I always remember reading this article um, about, it was actually about the Jamie Bolger murders or the killings of Jamie Bolger, and they interviewed this very prominent child psychologist who said that an 11-year-old, has has no concept of consequences. Yeah. They just don't. They Their brain isn't developed enough in order for them to be actually be able to understand consequences. Mm. It's why when I was a teacher, you used to see this all the time. Like a kid, like especially a little boy, would do something ridiculous, like push his friend over and his friend would be hurt. And then the teacher would take him to one side and have a go at him and go, oh, what, would, what did you expect to happen? And the kid would always just look at them and just shrug their shoulders. Because <laughs> they're not physically able to visualise consequences. Right, right. They can't. And that's why they're not tried in criminal courts yeah. as an adult. Yeah. And, but then if that is the case, if they have no idea of consequences, then how can they possibly understand the long-term consequences yeah. of taking puberty blockers? And the reality is that they can't, yeah. and we shouldn't be prescribing them to yeah, them. Yeah, and then we're seeing you know, the puberty blockers and, and the sort of pathway to, to transition like that. In a lot of cases, it's not, you know, well, given that you know, over 90% gets resolved by puberty, you know, that's over 90% that that's the wrong pathway for them. Yeah. And then we're seeing with the Tavistock Centre, that was a gender clinic in London. Yeah. Uh, it was shut down because of, uh, because yeah. of fears around this. And uh, now there's over a thousand families of, uh, of damaged children uh, who feel that they were uh, mistreated, misdiagnosed put in the wrong pathway they're they're suing the Tavistock the, the annoying thing for me is like it's all because it's the NHS it all comes out of my taxes <laughs> I, I, I'm literally I, I, like, you don't pay taxes I, pay, do. I do I, got, I don't even have any choice it comes out of my you know my money because I are 35 but um, like so I've got to pay for their all their like therapy and then their transition for these kids to like go along to the gender clinic get transitioned and stuff then I've got to pay for them to be detransitioned yeah, yeah. when they change their mind. Then I've got to pay for all the malpractice lawsuits yeah. and stuff. I didn't even want them to transition in the first place. How come I'm paying for it? Nobody's asking me what I want. That like, is the right wing argument, mate. Well any, done. I don't want any of these kids transition. I want them all working in a salt mine. So then, no, I, then I pay less tax. No, you don't. You want them working in a Starbucks, mate, because that's worse. I want them working in a Starbucks because that'll that'll make them cry. You know, we in our in trigonometry we interviewed Mark and Sevens. He was the whistleblower at the Tavistock. Right. 
And he actually said that the, uh, the there was a lot of people at the Tavistock who were motivated, and I'm probably slightly misquoting, but this was generally what he said, yeah. who were motiv- motivated more by ide- ideology yeah. than patient welfare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you hear that, you go, right, that is awful. Yeah. And once this sort of ideology is sort of taken grip of, yeah. across the organisation, anybody who's questioning, you know, the, the gender affirming yeah. ideology is, is then, you know, seen, seen as an outcast. There's people at the Tavistock who uh, were, um, you know, sort of basically bullied out of their jobs yeah. or called transphobic because they were questioning this stuff. So there's a real culture of, you know, you can't, you can't do that. Have you seen What is a Woman? No. Is that the Matt Walsh? Walsh, thing? that's Matt Walsh. So right. we interviewed Matt Walsh on the show and we watched What is a Woman, mate, it is terrifying. Yeah. It's well worth a watch. Yeah. It's really, I would really heartily recommend it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's really good. And but, also, it comes down to the thing of, like, nobody on the left can sort of do, say what a woman is. So if you can't say what a woman is, what does it mean when somebody says, oh, I'm, a, I'm a woman, I identify as a woman? It's like, so you identify as what? Well, this is a point. In, like, I, in, my, in my stand-up show, I make this point. I go, no one knows what a woman is, right? Yeah. You know, Rishi Sunak doesn't know what a woman is. Keir Starmer doesn't know what a woman is. No one knows what a woman is until you want to get laid. <laughs> then everybody knows what a fucking woman is. Do you know what I mean? That's when you know. So yeah. it's just, you know, like, there's no 36 genders on Pornhub. There's no non-binary porn, is there? Yeah, there probably is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there probably is now, yeah. But no one wants to watch it. Yeah, it's just asexuals. Yeah, exactly, yeah. just staring at each other. Yeah. That's another thing, like asexuals getting added to the to the pride flag as a sort I of, wish I was asexual. Man, like when have asexuals ever been discriminated against? What what <laughs> hardship have there have there been dads being like, Oh listen, when you're when you're living under my roof, you're gonna suck a dick. You know what I mean? It's like the asexuals are literally doing what every father, what every uh, you know, religious, you know, sexually intolerant bigot yeah. what, what they want them to do. That's what the Catholic Church says be an asexual until you get married. Have you seen that asexual model? No. She is incredibly fit. She is she abs- absolutely stunning. Asexual model. Is yeah. Look. She is just incredible. Jasmine Benoit. Yeah. I think this is the asexual model. Is that her? Is that her? There's a, maybe there's an. There's probably a heart. Yeah, there. yeah. There's probably yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's it. Are the, oh, it maybe is Yasmin Ben. Oh right. Yeah, and you just go like, what a waste. Yeah, but it's. Also, I wish I was asexual. Yeah, because you get shit done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get well, shit done. Have you got uh, get get married? It's not the same as like, <laughs> you can still have sex, but you don't have that um, that that constant drive to be like you know on Tinder or like, yeah. try to try to you know find somebody to marry. So yeah, get married honestly freed up a lot of. Uh, spare time in my life to do something more productive. <laughs> uh, now I've got a baby. Had about like a, about three months yeah. of uh, having time to be more productive. And then a baby came along, and now yeah. I've got less time again. Yeah. It's like all that all that Tinder time's been replaced with like changing, baby time. Yeah, baby time, changing shitty nappies. Um, but yeah, talking about the the trans thing. Um, so we've got the midterm elections. In fact, by the time this this goes out, yeah. Um, we might have the results of the midterms. And probably not, though, because the Democrats will spend a month you know, look, <laughs> looking under the couch for more votes like they did last time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm saying there's any election fraud, I think, you know, it's a misunderstanding. When, when, <clears throat> when we talk about election fraud and stuff, people don't necessarily mean that there's any sort of trickery mm, or yeah. you know, falsifying of votes or anything. What they're talking about is like, you know, the Hunter Biden laptop story. Yeah, getting, absolutely. That, that was squashed. That, yeah. was, that was taken yeah. taken down. Suppressed. Billed as, as fake news. Yeah. And even reports in reputable newspapers such as the New York Post mm-hmm. got, you know, deplatformed from social media. Uh, which is, you know, a big big reason why Elon yeah. Musk decided to buy Twitter, yeah. you know, to, to, make, to make it free and fair. Um, and also, um, also the sort of, uh, well, there's, there's other stuff as well that I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I... I've I've been following a little bit of the midterms and just seeing what's happening. Yeah. And it, what and look, this is whenever we're recording this, and so things are liable to change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. But you know this red wave that a lot of conservative and right leaning uh, pundits and publications have been predicting mm. simply hasn't happened. Yeah. If anything, what it's kind of proved is, although people are very disenchanted with the Democrats, I think ultimately the stain of January the sixth. Mm. 
it's not gone away. Yeah. And, and Trump is way too divisive a figure. Yeah. I think if you had a less toxic, less divisive figure, maybe like a Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. Yeah, then people would be, would be would feel that it was more acceptable to vote for him. Yeah. But what you're basically doing when you vote for Trump is you're voting for an internet troll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is hu hugely fun. I'm not joking. I've noticed, like, whenever he comes on TV or whatever, yeah, yeah. I cheer up. Yeah. It's so fun. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just like, listening to him, he's hilarious. Of he's course like, he is. I mean, terrible. I mean, <laughs> he's a terrible human being, but he's <laughs> hilarious. I remember when he was talking, I think mean, it was in 2016, about the building the wall and he's like we're going to build a wall and all this stuff and then the, the, this good mexican journalist i think it was went uh, but mr trump you know you say you're going to build a wall but da, 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 and he made all these good points and trump just pointed at him and went the world's got four feet taller that's <laughs> 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 just that's hilarious yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. wall's just got yeah. four feet taller yeah. all the things that a politician shouldn't be <laughs> yeah which is just like really incredibly biased and divisive and, yeah. and ego egotistical yeah. and everything but it's like it's hilarious to hilarious to watch. It is hilarious to watch, providing it doesn't fucking affect you. Yeah, yeah. And if it, I don't like it, like Trump is, you know, he's he was great for a joke. Yeah. But you kind of go, look, this is yeah. the most powerful nation in the world. This is the literal the leader of the free world. Yeah. I think we need somebody who's not fucking mental yeah, running yeah. it. And also, especially, you know, the next, you know, after 2024, we're going to see China probably try and invade yeah. Taiwan. And yeah. Obviously, Russia is still yeah. being a dick. Yeah. So you're going to need somebody who can... I know people say, oh, but Trump, there's none of this stuff happened under Trump because blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Yeah, he did... He did start to get results, but I don't know how much of that was by accident or by design. Yeah, exactly. Or how much of it actually sort of, you know laid the groundwork for, for what's happening now. But, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I don't know. I think another thing that um, that played into um, the Democrats doing better than expected is uh, the the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Yeah. So, you know, a sort of de facto ban on abortion in some states. It, sort of, it just basically meant states could, uh, could decide for themselves if abortion should be banned or not, which, you know, it sounds like democracy, but sometimes you don't really... Sometimes democracy is bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember, I think it was in Texas, there is now, past six weeks, you can't get an abortion. Yeah. And that's kind of like a ban on abortion. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Because You don't often know until... You, yeah, because sometimes women, through a variety of health, you know, you know, might miss a period, they might have irregular periods. Maybe slags. Exactly. You know, it's all these technical things, Leo. But you go, that is technically a ban on abortion. And yeah. if that's the case... It's too much of an extreme position. Yeah. And the the vast majority of women, particularly women who who are disenchanted with the Democrats, they're not going to go to the Republicans for that. Yeah. They're just not. Yeah. They might abstain or they might hold their nose or all of these things, but they're not going to vote for a Demo for a Republican who's effectively brought that in. Yeah, yeah. And I, I didn't understand it as a policy anyway. Like, surely, mm. I, as a sort of pragmatic right-wing person, I mean, I, man, also, man, I'm I'm anti-abortion. I think it's, you know, I think it's a it's yeah. a bad, it's a bad thing to kill, like, a little tiny, like, living baby. However, some people are cunts. However, well, some, some people are going to get it anyway. And also, up, up until about 15 weeks, you know, I think there's a, I think there's a, you should be allowed to, to get it. You know what I mean? I, I don't like the idea of it, but like I definitely think it shouldn't be my decision. If you want to get it, if you want to do that, like that's the, up, yeah. up to like 15 weeks is the point where it, you know, really yeah. undeniably becomes like a little, a little person. Like, yeah. uh, you know, and I think after that, man, I'm sorry, like you shouldn't, but as a sort of pragmatist and as a right wing person, I'm like, man, if all these like lefties and, and yeah. you know, trash people don't want to breed, I'm fine with that. I'm like fine with these people. I want, you know, I think, you know, not not to be a eugenicist or yeah. or you know or a, a snob or anything, but I'd rather see, um, I'd rather see like in the film Idiocracy. I'd, yeah. I'd rather see, uh, you know, stable, uh, educated, um, or maybe not educated, st stable but you know, good people have, yeah. having babies who are going to give the baby, going to love the babies and give give the baby a good mm. good life than. You know, chaotic crackheads and yeah. and also these blue-haired gender freaks are just going to make it transition straight away and stuff. 
Um, like if they're the one, they're the ones who who want to get abortions. I'm like, man, why would you, as a right wing person, why would you start that? But so I think one of the things is is that we all know somebody who would be better off as an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? There is there is literally someone we all know. There are whole that, towns in the UK. Yeah, exactly. We just go cover them all, but. I think the problem is, is that, especially in America, but over here, is that when you've got a society that's so polarized, people go to the extremes because they feel they're not being heard, they feel they're being mis- misrepresented, they're angry. So they take stances just to piss the other side off Yeah. and to punish the other side. Like Peter Hitchens said that in, in, in our first interview with him. He goes, we've got to a place in politics where... People adopt a stance or a policy, not because they feel it's good or that it will improve society or that it will, you know, that that it's good for them, but they do it purely to hurt the other side. Yeah. And once you do that, you're in a really dangerous place as a society. Yeah, that tribalism. Because that tribalism, because... It's damaging. Because what happens is you, you start adopting policies or taking on policies that aren't good for you and they're not good for society yeah. as a whole. And... Like the abortion thing, I, I I don't know enough about you know when it should be or, or whatever else. But if you're effectively alienating a huge swathe of the population, yeah, maybe you should have a look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you should. Yeah. You know, and I I just really worry that with Trump, I hope he doesn't run. I hope he doesn't run. He's go- he's going to run. What that means is Biden is going to run as well because Biden thinks that he's the only person who can beat Trump for some reason. But I think they're both going to drop out, yeah. to be honest. I don't think they're going to make it. I-, I think, you know, both parties recognise. At the moment, um, it's almost it's almost like um, gender ideology at the Tavistock. Yeah. Nobody in the Republican Party wants to, you know, stick their head above the parapet and say, wait a minute, Trump is actually toxic for the party. Yeah. Uh, because then they'll get shouted down but a lot of people are thinking it yeah so everybody's going along with it at the moment but then i think a credible candidate ron DeSantis, yeah. hopefully who i keep calling rick de sanchez because <laughs> uh, rick and morty yeah but um i think he's gonna step in and everybody's gonna be like listen this guy he's like way less toxic he's capable he knows what he's doing yeah like let's get this guy instead and man ron de santis imagine like ron de santis like on a uh, you know, with uh, somebody like Tulsi Gabbard as a, as a yeah. running mate, would that yeah. absolutely just destroy the Democrats? Yeah, like, yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, of course they would. But that's the problem: is that you just look at the two people that they that that have been offered in in the in the twenty twenty general election, yeah, and not general election, whatever your presidential election. You you had you know Hillary Clinton or Trump. Objectively, two fucking terrible candidates. Yeah. You had in 2020, two objectively terrible candidates. Yeah. When are we, and especially in this country as well, like, when are we going to actually get offered politicians who are competent and can do their job? Well, I think part of the problem is that, um, man, like, politics isn't the sort of, uh, it's, it's not an attractive job no. for a lot of people, man. You get so much grief in every aspect of your your life and your finances and everything gets picked over. Yeah. And so yeah, you just get you get so much grief and you're just constantly getting hate. There's so much. Yeah. There's so and I think in America especially, it used to be it used to be a lot less divisive. I remember being, being over there in the nineties, like ninety six, I think it was. Mm. And um, there's a real man. Everybody. You know, you might be a Republican, you might be a Democrat, but you loved your country. You yeah, of course. The, God you know, bless you support, America. You supported the president. Yeah. I remember going to see uh, Independence Day, you know, yeah. Smith yeah. in, uh, in Times Square in New York. So, you know, the liberal yeah. stronghold. Yeah. But at the end of the film, the whole cinema just spontaneously erupted into chanting, USA, yeah. USA. Now they just seen, fuck off. Did you, see, <laughs> did you see Will Smith like yeah. punch an alien in the face? Yeah. And man, but it was a real, I mean, all right, as a, as a Brit, I was like, man, this is kind of cringe. This yeah. would never happen in Britain. <laughs> yeah. But it was also, part of me was like, man, that is inspiring. That is beautiful. It was like, you know, such, such a nice thing. And yeah, I just feel that, um, yeah, it's lost that, you know, it's people have just drifted apart, and you don't you don't get that. Like Democrats won't respect the Republican president, and and vice versa. And and that's the real problem is where you dehumanize the other side. Yeah. And you know, 
and, and and you just see people not as individual people not as people with their own experiences of life with their own ways of looking at the world with their own views but as people who are either right or wrong yeah you know and it goes back to that kind of like you know that woke language are you an ally well if you if you're not an ally then what are you logically yeah, yeah. Can't I just not give a shit? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What's the harm in, to you of me not giving a shit about your dumb blue hair gender woo woo? Yeah, it is? you know, and then the other side as well, like you know, with, with people who are just like you know, really, really on the right, and they, whatever version of the right it may be. At what point can we not just go like, actually, you're a fucking person, and <laughs> and we just I disagree with you, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, well, a big a big driver. I mean, the the um, the midterm elections are sort of uh, um, a plebiscite, or is that how you pronounce it? Plebiscite. Plebiscite mm. on uh, Joe Biden's Joe Biden's premiership, and people are worried about crime, inflation, and gas prices. So Joe Biden has listened. He's listened and he's done. Uh, mm-hmm. He's done what the people want. He's done an interview with right. um, a transgender woman. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And it it feels like Republicans have turned trans and non-binary people into this thing to blame society's downfall on in some ways. And this narrative is not only dangerous to our mental health, but also our physical safety. And particularly trans women of color are being murdered at an alarming rate. More than any other group of people. Thank you. How can Democratic leaders be more effective in advocating for us trans people in our families, in our lives, in our opportunities? I'm not being facetious when I say this, being seen with people like you. No, I mean it. I genuinely mean it. People fear what they don't know. They fear fear what they don't know. (laughs) And (laughs) when people realize, individuals realize, oh, this is what they're telling me to be frightened of? This is the problem? This is... I mean, people change their minds. People are just don't know enough to know. And it's not because of intellectual incapability it's just lack of exposure and uh and i think that uh, it's really important that we continue to speak out about the basic fundamental rights of all human beings and the idea the idea that what's going on you know in some states i won't get into the politics of it but in some states it's just (laughs) it's outrageous (laughs) and i think it's immoral (laughs) the trans part's not immoral what they're trying to do to trans persons is immoral. It's, uh, man, yeah, like the... <laughs> when they instantly go to the sort of, you know, oh, trans women of colour. I don't I just find that uh, alienating to to the regular yeah. dude. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, the trans women of colour, they, maybe they are being persecuted. Not in adverts. You know what no. I mean? If, you, if you're a trans woman of colour and you want to be in an advert, man, there's like, you know, you... Yeah. They don't have... There's, they don't have enough trans women of colour for all the gaps in adverts right now. You know yeah, of I mean? course, because there's not enough hot ones. <laughs> the thing is, you don't, don't even need to be a hot one. And this Dylan Mulvaney, so who, who is uh, being interviewed by there? Mm. Uh, so this is a, um, a transgender TikToker mm. who... They've got 8.4 8. million subscribers mm. uh, so they've got like sponsorship deals worth over a million dollars and stuff mm. and the like as transgender people go like i know a lot of transgender people and they just they just are yeah they just are the other they, mm. they are the gender that they they say they are uh they don't even need to say it because yeah. it's obvious that they are you yeah. know i mean we know yeah. there's there's some in comedy that have been around for for ages yeah and um uh, also you know that like people who just put effort and you might sometimes be able to you know, maybe tell, yeah. but a lot of times you wouldn't even know. Dylan Mulvaney, on the other hand, seems to be seeing it as some sort of cartoonish LARPing. Yeah. They're doing a video for every day of, mm. they call, uh, she calls it girlhood. Uh, this is day 66 of girlhood. Day 66, being a girl, and today I'm in nature. Trees, I love them. Water, lakes, I love them. Heels, they're my hiking heels, I love them. Okay, come on. Ah. <laughs> Bridges, love them. <laughs> Coconut water, love it. Not nad, just love it. <laughs> this is a piss take. This is a fucking piss take. Fuck off. No, this is a real woman. This is just what women are like. 
All women are like this. Instead of getting Lyme disease. <laughs> Did he just say about Lyme disease? Yeah, okay. but on a lawn. <laughs> and there's a bunk. Did you see that? I gotta get out of here. Man. Did you see that? There's a dragon. Oh my god. Never again. Get me out of here. Love ya. I mean... No, mate, no, mate, he's a comedian. <laughs> that is a comedian. Fuck off. That is not a serious person. That is a beautifully executed comedic sketch. Do you think that's a troll and she's going to yes. reveal it as a troll? Like, yes. you know, like Will Frank? <laughs> yeah, that is a troll, mate. That is not a serious human being. Have wind turbine. <laughs> Fuck off. That is a yeah. very talented comedian. Yeah, well, uh, no, I mean, like, be, like really sort of uh, base 1940s carry on idea of what a woman is. This ditzy, like, ah, they make all the bag, yeah, you know, all that kind of thing. It's yeah. like, yeah, that's not that's not trans. That is like, that is a really off offensive. I hate to be the person getting offended again, but like, you know, on behalf of women, it's, it's a no, sort of. I'm offensive. not even offended. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's one of the funniest things I've seen this week. Yeah. Like, genuinely on the internet. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, and people, that's a big accolade, right? That, that, fuck off. That's not real. <laughs> You can't do that and prance about and then say, I love wind turbo. <laughs> Fuck off. That's brilliant. That's hilarious. That is a troll taken to the max. Yeah. And people aren't seeing that. That's performance art, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no way that's serious. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't seem to be serious. My hiking heels. Yeah, yeah. That is... No, fuck off. Who looks at women and thinks, this is what a woman is, and no. this is how women behave? Yeah. <laughs> I have never once seen a woman express, you know, any type of emotion for a wind turbine. <laughs> Right? No, that's a piss take. Fuck off. <laughs> Francis, thanks so much for uh, for joining me today. No, it's a pleasure. Yeah, me and Francis are doing some shows, some we live are. shows in the Midlands. We're doing it. Uh, so if you want to come and see both Leo and myself, uh, it is December the 20th, December 21st. It's Leicester and Stafford. I've also got a couple of other dates coming through. So uh, if you want, come and see me. Uh, on tour, www.francisfoster.co.uk. Okay, the rest... The rest of the... <laughs> Mate, you're a fucking pro. You used to give me sticks saying that I was wooden on trigonometry. <laughs> the second part... The second part of Clown World is on my Patreon. The second part... The second part of Clown... Mate, this is shit. If, if you want to watch the second part of Clown World, it's on my Patreon, so go and sign up there. There's... Thank fuck you're not in sales, mate. <laughs> yeah. Let me do it. This has been an incredible interview. If you want to see the second amazing part of this episode, it is only available on Leo's Patreon. The only way you're going to get it is by signing up to Leo's Patreon. And by doing that, you get amazing extra content like the second part. Plus, you get to support a, a really problematic right-wing creator.